Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is the second episode of my new How to Build a Prosthetic Socket series of videos. Today's video is actually more of a side quest, since this probably isn't the last device that I'm going to design and fabricate, and subsequently need a prosthetic socket for. This video starts with demolding the plaster that was cast in the alginate from the last video, and will end with pouring the silicone to make a master mold. So let's get started. Okay, so there we are. So okay. So and this and this is why you you want to demold uh pretty pretty soon after after you uh, after it starts going off because otherwise it'll it'll inhibit the plaster from from fully setting up so that looks like a great uh, that looks like a great cast something that I glossed over in the last video was the inclusion of a 3 8 lag inserted in the base of the plaster I did this so I had an easy way to hold and fixture the plaster as I was cleaning and then later sealing it. I let the plaster air dry for three or four days at room temperature just to make sure that there wasn't excess moisture that was going to be leaving the plaster as I was casting it in silicone. I could have baked it in an oven at 100 degrees for three or four hours, but then I'd really be running the risk of cracking it. And since the alginate is really just a one-time deal, I didn't want to risk having to start over from the beginning. After the plaster was dry, I needed to seal it to make it mostly waterproof so I could cast it in silicone. To do this, I applied three or four coats of Gorilla wood glue to the plaster and then spread it around using my fingers, being sure to coat the entire surface. Once the glue dries, it leaves a smooth, glossy coating that should be waterproof enough for what I'm doing today. Even though you're left with a super smooth surface, it's still a really good idea to use a release agent of some kind in order to make sure that you can get the plaster out of the silicone once it's set up. Now that I have the plaster ready, I need a box that I can pour the silicone into. I sized the box to have about 5 eighths of an inch all around the plaster model. This should offer enough stiffness that the silicone isn't all floppity. I designed the box using slots and tabs with removable pins that hold it all together. They can be easily disassembled once the silicone is cured. I cut all the parts out using my laser, but really you can build a box out of just about anything. Just remember, it should be easily taken apart and put back together because you need it to hold the silicone in its initial casting form in order to get repeatable casts. Rather than going through the process of sealing the box, I figured out that I could use a cut down treats bag and that the square pleated bottom fit nicely into the box, making it a perfect container to cast everything in. The silicone I'll be using today is Alumalite Plat 25. It has a 35 minute pot life and can be demolded in 24 hours. It's a 1 to 1 AB silicone that's mixed by either weight or volume, so that makes it pretty easy to use. The only thing about it is it does need to be degassed. There's an Amazon link in the description for the vacuum setup that I ended up purchasing for this project. I'll be using this setup later on for when I'm doing the vacuum bag infusion and actually laying up the fiberglass to build the socket. To calculate the amount of silicone that I needed, I took the volume of the box, length, width, height, and then subtracted the displacement of the plaster. The numbers that I used were 7 inches by 6 by 4, and for the plaster cast I used 4 by 4 by inch and a half. That gives me 168 cubic inches, subtract 24 cubic inches, leave me with 144. Now, Lumalite's website says that one cubic inch of silicone weighs 21 grams. That means I'm going to have a total pore mass of 3,024 grams. So, 1,500 grams of A, 1,500 grams of B. I'll be using solo cups and a treats container to measure out and to mix this project. A solo cup holds about 400 grams of silicone and I'll be vacuum degassing both before and after I mix just to make sure I get rid of all the air bubbles. I ended up repeating this process three times giving me a total pour volume of 2400 grams. I don't know where the math went sideways but I'm really glad that I poured it in smaller batches rather than mixing up the whole 3000 grams and figuring out that I was over by that much. 
One thing that I can't emphasize enough is to be sure to use some type of release agent to make sure that the silicone releases off both the master and the bag. For this, I use nonstick cooking spray. You don't want it super drippy wet, but you want to be sure that you don't have any dry spots. For my project, it took about four hours to just start skinning and to really start setting up. In the next video, I'll show the demolding process and cutting the plaster from the newly cast silicone block. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Egyptians invented papyrus paper at least 5,000 years ago, replacing clay tablets and revolutionizing the written word. They used it for things like marriage contracts and shopping lists. They also turned the plant into a weaving material for sandals and bags. Are you done? Cheaper paper made from wood pulp or plant fibers eventually replaced papyrus paper, and the plant became nearly extinct.